Starting recording. Okay, welcome everybody. So this has been a, a bit of a hiatus, and we're getting back to making a lot of noise on uh, CD Go Home. Uh, we regularly run team meetings with pretty much anybody's open to is open to participation. But what I want to cover today is how we align, <clears throat> get focused on the CD Go Home. The, so this is the main product release that we're getting into. Over the the next year to a full enterprise next year, and, and the the rollout right now is one is the documentation on the project itself. There's a bunch of uh, builds that are coming up to actually prove the economic model of the build. So, so for the CD Go Home, the basic basic package is is um, uh, actually what let's um. I'll I'll throw in links so you can follow all that's happening right now. And John, maybe I can ask you to collect all the links so after, after that we can publish them under the video. So let's start by, yeah, st start by talking about what, what we're working with. And um, let me share my screen and um, uh, talk about the CD Go Home too. So, so what we're officially working on is the CD Go Home too. So this is this is what we're building. So this thing here is what's partially done in the back in um, in our backyard right here at Factory Farm in Maysville, Missouri. If you want to take a look at the most recent photos on the CD Go Home, the the actual status of that is this is kind of like how it's looking. Uh, it's uh, it's just one of the latest photos uh, and. I will share so this if we can put in this this folder into the chat um, put this uh, I can't I can't share the I can't share the links and share the screen at the same time so let me just type in the link so this is the photo folder as far as the doc, the main documentation of what we're working on is uh, is this wiki page um, so let me type that in there. It's a relevant uh, thing. And what we're trying to engage here in is a global collaborative design process, which focuses on, uh, focuses on complete digitization of the design. On one side, there's the full, full computer-aided design, the CAD files, and reconciling that with a complete bill of materials and with a complete set of instructions for how to build this in theory that can be replicated by anybody. We've shown back in 2011 that people can simply download our digital designs and replicate the things that we do. For example, with the brick press in 20, 2011 or so, person replicated our brick press completely from online documentation. So the goal here is to have absolute exhaustive documentation. So let's go to the CAD, for example. This is, uh, I'm going to paste in. master files uh, just to show you the, the kind of level of documentation we're we're getting at uh, so take a look at these master files uh, it's in the chat box let me just uh, show my screen but what we're doing here which is unique is an absolute exhaustive documentation of everything there is so I mean from the overall design file uh, to details like Take a look at this. That's the absolutely entire water system with every single part, or just about. I mean, we're trying to get to the hundred percent, but we're more like uh, eighty to ninety-five percent. Like little little mistakes that we still got to wrap up, or like the complete plumbing um, right here. But but let me actually open up the FreeCAD model to see what it's like. So actually, we've got this is open source FreeCAD software. Okay, you can see everything here, and let's let's hide everything. Uh, but okay, so in this, so this is the asset that we have. So first floor, I got the plumbing in there. Let's turn that off. So you got the first floor. You got a second floor in this thing, right now. Um, plenty of. I mean, you can pretty much very carefully walk through the entire design in here. Like the other modules would be to say the. the uh, hide the second floor. We, we have things like the floor joists. The, the basic model comes with a carport. So we've got a carport. Uh, the electrical part is actually what we're putting into CAD right now. There's some parts of that. Um, there's the roof, you know, it's a flat roof. 
<clears throat> etc. But but you kind of get the picture. You can go like, okay, uh, maybe I'll just show, say, for example, you know, the plumbing, uh, just to show you, you know, the kind of level of detail. Like what what we're gonna do in these working sessions is, okay, say we got this CAD file. You can actually follow this quite thoroughly. Okay, it's this uh, three inch pipe that goes into this Y that goes into this reducer and so forth to the actual shower here or um, this kind of system, uh, you know, to the kitchen sink and so forth. So, so that level, oh wait, I'm, am I, are you guys seeing that? Are you guys uh, seeing my screen share? Yeah, we still got okay, it. Okay, okay, so I'm gonna stop sharing. But um, idea is going between the CAD build instructions and BOMs, those three things should be completely digital and complete complete, so you can go from one to the other and to the other uh, just like that. We should be able to actually reconcile everything. So the idea is now uh, to make, in order to make this highly replicable, we publish everything that we have and we've got, you know, like bills of materials, let me, the bills of materials isn't, that's, that's the main part, a big sprawling spreadsheet of many different assets there. Um, that's what I just typed in. Believe it or not, it actually can, corresponds fully to the, to the to the the CAD pending a lot of lot of rework. I mean, there's it's our comprehensive work that we've done pretty much over the last year, and there's a lot of like, okay, we're playing with this part or that part. Maybe it's not a finalized uh, finalized BOM. We have to uh, reconcile everything. But that's the name of the the game here. We can get a lot of different people to basically do modular breakdown into parts, the house into the parts and therefore we can have a lot of people working on it together. And if you want a perspective of how the, the larger scale collaborative process can happen, our goal with the house itself is literally getting to the point of thousands of people working on it real time, making evolution, like uh, different models of the house, uh, different complete CAD, CAD of a new model that we actually put on the market and we're taking it all the way to a feasible product with all the detail, not like, oh, here's like a pattern, here's an actual product, and here's the complete cost and business model. So the in the Kickstarter of 2016, we called it the Open Source Building, the called the Open Building Institute Building Book, uh, that we're still working on in 2022. And for now, in order to capture all the details, it's probably gonna be like a 1500 page Bible, the, the resource on, um, that has everything. And we can start on the table of contents. We have to have the CAD, we have to have the build instructions and bill of materials and all of that. So, um, right now the bill of materials cost is $60,000 for what you've seen, for the two-story, thousand square foot uh, carport. Uh, everything, all the systems inside, 60,000 bill of materials cost. And if you can actually build it yourself, you can download that and, and work from there. But the, the real deal is we know that not a lot of people are going to be building it themselves, so we have to create an, an enterprise to do this. So John Miller here set up, helped us set up an apprenticeship program, the apprenticeship program which we want to start in March of 2023 with 24 people uh, taught how to build this in five days using this module-based approach uh, kind of design. And to, to show you the reality of that, if you haven't seen uh, the modular build aspect, let's go back maybe to, well, yeah, we, we had the CD go home back here, but I mean, if you go back uh, way down in history um, to how we were making the modules, imagine, okay, so these are the modules, how they are coming up together. So if you can think about this, literally each team of two can be putting up one of these modules. And it's actually, we had the, the red siding, red, uh, red siding on it, but you build it, we, we would build the things in the workshop and then assemble them rapidly into place. So, so the goal in the, eco, the real economic model, in the real economic model is five day builds with 24 trained apprentices. Now we're gonna mix, mix some of the education and collaboration model with this. So when we actually go into a real build site, we can open it up to the public as well for, for training and for learning purposes or volunteers. It's just kind of like what we did with all the former builds here, starting, and let's let's go back to the history of what we've got behind this. So um, uh, 
on the wiki, it's called Microhouse Genealogy. I'm going to put that link in the chat right now um, and share the. So there's the genealogy. I'm going to share the screen again here. Look what we've done so far to get us to here. We found that we can. We can. Okay. So we start with. Oh, that doesn't look much like. Uh, what we're building right now. But we started with things like this, like this cord with HUD and, and things like that. That was a lot of, a lot of pain, uh, a lot of work to get that in. <clears throat> uh, we did things like the Microhouse One. Uh, this, this, this is, uh, used to live in this before it's made from compressed earth blocks. Uh, we were doing this, we did this with like 12 people over a few days and of course a lot of finishing work. Uh, Microhouse 2 was this one. You can see some videos online. That was, once again, a workshop. Then in 20, major major point there was, um, oh, we did more like this one here, compressed earth blocks as well. Uh, that's on site. Uh, the fourth one, which was, um, th this is how it looks here which was basically a bunch of the two, two microhouse one and two put together with a back added to it. And then we turned down to the CD home, which was now, this is the one, this is the house I live in right here. This is this, this red one here. Uh, we've done aquaponic greenhouse right now. We actually turned aquaponics into a pool for Katarina Sierra and for, she needs to swim to, for her back issues. That's the inside. Um, but, this this kind of model that was 1400 square feet then after that we went to um sea home two and that's the current one that's the rosebud model the black one here that's what we're on right now as the product release we call it rosebud uh, we name it after plants and then we even did like the next iteration of this which was uh, this was during last summer but we were uh, can't see this picture's not too big here but we did this in a, as a rapid build to test out some of the, the modular build technique to see if we can actually build it as fast as we think we want to. Uh, so all of this colludes to our ability uh, to be pretty confident that we can do these builds in five days with 24 people. And it's, man, it's, but it's really like a decade or two of work in terms of one, how do you do all the workflow? How do you simplify the design? How do you make it modular? And if you can understand modularity and a concept of depth of modularity, like where, how exactly do you break down a thing in order for many people to work on it together? Like, how, how exactly do you do it? That's, that's an art. Um, <clears throat> now, as far as the, the large collaborative process, we have a thing called Meta Design Guide. I actually want you to look at this. Um, it discusses the concept of this triumvirate of full CAD, full BOM, and that, therefore the build instructions. That's kind of like the theory behind it. So take a look at it if you want to do that. Um, so what's the next steps? The next steps here are to actually, we're, we're building out the, the interior plumbing and electrical and all the finishing of the Sidika home, which is happening by July 15th. In October and November, we're gonna build four houses for real clients outside. That's going to be St. Joseph area, Kansas City area. That's around us here. And next, in 2023, we the the we are planning on 50. That's what a team of 24 can do in a year. So between I would say between 25 and 50. The program for the apprenticeship will look like either the full track of your building houses or your building houses, and then you're doing a s more study for further uh, uh, skill sets like being able to design or to manage or to enterprise on a house. So, so that's, that's the thing. Uh, we're promising that the framework of lifelong learning where you've got the ability to, okay, here we can train you to, to do the building part if you're a uh, person who likes to work with their hands. But, it, but we set no limits, no glass ceiling to what anyone can do. So we're saying, okay, it's your choice. Decide how much you want to get paid by how much skills you want to get. So that's kind of how we're approaching this apprenticeship program. With the first thing, the, the core ability to build, to have the capacity to build 50 of these per year. And the, the part that is not proven right now is some of the logistics, or if you, can, if you say the building permit, the inspection part. We know that in Kansas City, for example, it takes three days for an inspector to show up because this is all called legal, according to uh, to national what's the build IBC International Building Code, NEC plumbing codes. 
this is all in there and you get inspectors checking up on your work as you do a build. Typical build lasts eight months. We do it in five days. It's a 36 factor of 36 X. Uh, is that better? Yeah, it can lead to different economics, a much more robust business model around it. If we can do 25 houses a year, that's a, that looks like, in terms of net revenue, it's like a million bucks or so. So, so anyway, if, the, if this is proven, then, then this really paves the way for huge scaling ability because then we can apply the, the method of, okay, here we start a training program, and then the students that are in there, while they can choose to be just builders, they can also choose to, to do the continuing development and contribute to the design and collaborative development. So here's a way to bootstrap fund an, an ongoing product development process that takes us to the promise of the Global Village construction set, we, which we want to finish by 2028. But that means literally like the, the real hard learning is it's going to take like a million bucks per product. We probably spent half a million doing the, the CE Eco home. But I mean, if you count all the other builds and everything else, that's easily a million and dollars spent, that's probably not even counting the time. Um, but, but realistically, we're looking at, you get, you got the Global Village construction set of 50 machines, 50 million dollar, and, and there you go. But we're finding that it's, it is that long development process, and to, to get it from those prototypes to the finished product, that's like a whole game in itself. And I would probably say, to go from the, the prototype to the actual business is probably like, I don't know, like maybe like five times as hard, like five X more effort, at least two X the effort. Because, you know, initially I'd think, oh yeah, you design this brick press or design a tractor or whatever, and it's like, it might take off by itself as an enterprise. It doesn't, there's much more development to get to a packaged product. So that's the kind of thing. Uh, but the promise is, uh, is good right now. It's um, the ability to build, uh, build rapidly, train people, absolute open source, meaning that anybody can pick this up independently. We want anybody to contribute to it because that's how we think. I mean, our goal is set at how do we solve housing? So beyond this, now this is just stick frame. Well, what's the next steps? Next steps are doing the same house, five days, compressed earth block or 3D printed uh, plastic lumber composites using large 3D printers like we prototyped some of those here or getting more ambitious things well there's lumber that we want to actually get but more ambitious to crazy things like how about solar concrete that means baked rock using photovoltaics well we're building a workshop here with 50 kilowatts of solar that's planned for uh, the next year's apprenticeship. Uh, with that, we can start experiments, for example, doing things like solar concrete. So, you, uh, so or anything else. Uh, I mean, it's ambitious. Like down to making things like concrete, steel, lumber, plastic, or anything from local resources. Like it sounds like a fairy tale that like, because we're saying, oh, well, we can actually do that all off the resources of a parcel of land. Well, it requires a lot of different technology. Only thing that's going to make it all possible is open source, meaning that you have un unlimited access to information that allows all this to happen, and then creating actual operations models that work with that. So our model for here is, here's this um, training facility. First is the core of the 24-person apprenticeship, but also on these, th these mere 30 acres, we're going to build it up to 240 people, so effectively like 10 cohorts so that we can really get a rapid speed on development of, of all of this. And we're actually talking about this multi-story uh, kind of a workshop structure where each floor would set certain center on a different topic. Like for example, the first floor of this multi-story workshop would be the, the building of the house kits or the, the housing work. The second floor might be, oh, here's uh, metal processing or CNC machining and so forth. On the last floor, you might have the aquaponics and maybe some, some other stuff. But um, yeah, um, we can talk about crazy plans for the future. So we do look at a, a multi, actually a multi-story workshop structure with a base of about 5,000 square feet because if you're talking about replicating this, you have to prove a model that can be replicated. And, we, and here on the 30 acres, I mean, it would sprawl all over the place if we had all these buildings. So we are actually thinking of going vert vertically, which means you can also rep do that in a city block or whatever. But what's the limit uh, to the... Swarm build method. I don't think there's a limit 
if you define the modularity appropriately, like for example, you can build a block. How about building a block in, in Milwaukee or Kansas City, Kansas? Uh, build a whole block, thousand people over a week or a month or a weekend. I mean, that kind of stuff, it's, it can be done. Um, or reconstruction in Ukraine, let's get a bunch of people and build a bunch of, bunch of infrastructure rapidly uh, using, say, natural materials like compressed earth block. Uh, so that's all, it's all feasible. It's, it's just a matter of um, uh, allowing the open source knowledge flows to, to get us to get there. Um, and uh, now the building book, so that's, that's the theme of the, these meetings now. Um, what do we do about that? How do we divvy that up so it's a sensible thing to do? That's the challenge. Um, but the thing is that it requires so many different roles. So draft, CAD drafts people can collaborate. Definitely like building designers, plumbers, architects, electricians can co contribute to the design. People who are technical writers or copywriters, because this is a book that's intended to be publishable. Also like a, a short section of the book will be like our pretty book, the coffee table books. That's, that's what I want to get out of that as well, because all the details will be in a full, in a full book. What are all the other roles? You name it. I mean, graphics design, whatever, instructionals production. So there's technical writing, writing. Uh, if you if you ever, but if you don't have experience, how do you how do you actually get to it? Well, if you have the complete computer aided design, you can extract a lot of things. Like for example, okay, let's get that complete bill of materials, which right now may be jumbled up in the bill of materials, say for the plumbing. Well, you can look at the CAD, and you can say, oh, this is exactly the parts that go into it, and then we're going to go about listing it. That's an example of the typical kind of work that we have to do right now. It's a bunch of accounting for all the designs and the CAD, uh, all the design documents that we have, and putting that into a coherent, integrated whole. So that's the nature of the process. And, and the idea here is to do dole out those tasks to people who, who, can, who can do them, starting from a table of contents. and. Um, the table of contents, I just have a, it's a very simple page, <clears throat> but it's kind of like the, uh, here's the table of contents, but what we can do is use a working doc like cloud Google Docs, you know, Google Docs, which you can edit collaboratively at the same time, you can edit the wiki at the same time, uh, and then we can be uh, divvying up the tasks to, to many different people. Uh, so maybe, um, so I, I intend this to be just a mere introduction to what we're doing, and then, you know, as people come into this, we, we can dole out different tasks and start organizing the actual, actual document from from all the existing material that exists. And it gets to be a you know a technical thing. Here's like the hundreds and thousands of pages we've got of design documents all over the wiki, uh, organizing them. So so for example, on in the table of contents, if you go in there like. You know, for the rosebud electrical diagram, you can edit the wiki page and you can add all kinds of assets. So you kind of, the, the skill set required there is some familiarity with what a wiki is and, and how to edit collaboratively. But mainly, um, it's identifying very specific tasks to the point that, okay, one person actually gets one page out of this entire um, building book. I would say the number one priority would be what we call build, building cheat sheets. So for example, if you got to build one of the wall modules, of which there's like 48, okay? How about one page, which gets you all the critical cuts, basic instructions, so that if you know how to use a saw and use a screwdriver, then you can actually put these together. So, so th one of the biggest products, in pri priority-wise, would be number one, uh, I would say the, the build cheat sheets. Then it's some work about updating the CAD. Like, we want to have every single part, and we don't yet, I mean, we have a lot of it, but we, we want every single part that we use in this CAD model um, so that it's actually a, a complete, complete detailed file. And that actually never happens in real life because that takes too much effort. But we're saying, well, we gotta get as close to that because we really want this to spread and be as tra transparent as possible. And once we define it one time, so you define all the parts, define all the modules, all the build techniques, all the materials. Well, once you have that, because this is a modular construction set, you can actually start building new versions of the house. And that's 
and that's the modularity aspect. And that we want to capture within this, this building book as well. So one is the technical know-how for replication, for design, also economic analysis. How do you, you know, how much does it cost? How, how much time does it take? And, and what is the revenue model that comes out of this if you're going to say, for example, run a crew of 24? Or if you're going to just build it by yourself uh, for clients, which you could do in about probably like three months. You can probably do it with one or two people. Um, or what if you're selling, uh, providing the option for kits where uh, the promise of that is if you're an individual and you download or you know, get some training on this, you can build these modules and stash them away over many, many weekends. So say for like, as long as you like, you, you know, for weekends, I mean, weekends and nights, you'd be building these modules and stashing them away. Um, and then you can assem assemble this with a friend or a few friends rapidly once you have all the modules. So our goal for that is actually still to be able to do something like that, uh, perhaps in two, once you have all the modules built and a foundation poured, uh, assemble everything in like two weeks. Um, I don't know, that's, that's pretty hard, but, but I think it might, it might be doable with like, uh, we initially said two people, once they have all the modules fully prepared, assemble it all within, within like two weeks. It's doable if each module has all those details that you normally would build in afterwards. So, so you can put a lot into the individual modules and as we optimize it, that's still our goal. Um, so anyway. Um, hey, Marcin, before you go any further, can you drop the link to the table of contents? I didn't see that come through the chat. Oh, <laughs> okay. Somehow I'm direct messaging somebody else. Um, everyone, how about this? Did that come through? No. While you're doing that, um, do you want to open it up, open up uh, yeah. the discussion, or see if yeah, anybody has any questions? Get some questions in this, because um, yeah, if anyone has any questions, so yeah, that's the table of contents there. Um, so, and and just just for the big picture of how this works, it's like I mean, we'll do. It's really up to you know who shows up at the table and and you know what initiative and skills people have. So feel free, like you don't have to worry about oh, do I make mistakes or or whatever it's anyone can contribute to this but at the end of the day i mean you do need serious editing at the end but you know a lot of people can contribute the, the micro pieces because if you with the concept of modular breakdown if you break it down in a way that actually works um you can have a very highly skilled person understand the whole process and then you know actually put this book together or you can say here's one task out of a breakdown of you know very very bitwise breakup breakdown and a person who doesn't have that whole understanding they can still do it because they can do things like oh here I can look at the CAD I can copy and paste images and actually put them into instructionals and things like that off the CAD um, but yeah that's that's the general process so there's a lot to it but uh, this is an experiment that intends to to scale and build and of course we need really good documentation on how to do this entire process and that's scattered all over the place so part of this this exercise would be to, to document some pages okay how do you collaborate how do you take these assets what what tools do you have to use and all that that needs to be put in there and it's all over the wiki and all that but this is now about making this human digestible in, in a published format okay so let's do some questions actually john you want to um, type in um this meeting is going to end actually pretty pretty quickly because I was using the free version. John's got the paid version of Zoom that... Um, yep, I just dropped the link uh, for the new chat room, uh, switching at 540 or whenever yeah, we once, it kicks yeah, off. Once, it, once this actually, it's going to just cut off automatically in a, in a little bit. Click on that link or you can actually just click on it right now so you have it. Um, yeah, so I actually clicked on the other one. If you feel like it, you can you can actually join the other one already. 
Um, so we'll just move over to the other room in your other tab when when this this ends. Uh, but questions? I mean, any questions on the process so far? This is going to be it's an experiment as always. Hi, uh, I'm Iris Starr. I'm out here in Berkeley, California, Hi. and I I really I'm interested in uh, joining the fast build in October. Yeah. Um, because I really think that's going to help me understand a lot more about the pieces that we're putting together. Um, so I want to contribute to the book, and mm -hmm. I want to see if I can come out and help on that. So any details you want to give up about October um, would be great. Yeah. Uh, as far as October, we're looking at about October 7, but we still got to, John and some others, we still got to talk about nailing down that date. But, but it, early on like 7th or 10th or something like that um, and it will be literally those five days and we we wouldn't do it in Kansas City we will do it in a place like St. Joe where you can actually order the inspector to be on there on site with you and you can get the inspection schedule addressed as you're doing the build so but the idea would be to go through the, through the entire build and that's going to be a crazy thing which we've done here without the requirement of really finishing everything to the final detail but here we're going to actually you know after all these years we're trying to, to do it to the, the actual final bit otherwise it's it's cost and it might break the the model the financial model if we can do it in time or i mean labor is a real real big issue and we want to pay people a lot but if um uh, if we do that the only way we can pay people a lot to have a good living doing this is is if we're very eff effective and yeah yeah but well, if this if this if this works, if we can actually you know swarm build something in five or ten days or whatever, yeah. I work with a whole bunch of unhoused people, yeah. and they want to build their own housing, yeah. and they own a lot in East Oakland, and you know they want to go, and so yeah. I would love to be able to bring one of the the people with me because they train each other in everything. Absolutely. Um, so, great. Yeah. We're going to work out what the details are. We're going to have to have skilled staff on site, so probably six crew leaders that are experienced, but everyone else mm -hmm. can, can come in on that. So, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be working all these details out, starting with uh, the finalization of this build here, where we're actually testing out the speed of the build on the interior systems with the plumbing and electrical cabinets and floor finishes and everything else. Um, before Ju July 15. And I think altogether, the more we know, uh, the more we're finding out, yeah, I see it, it's, it's looking pretty sweet. That's just my opinion. The, the whole rest of the world has to see it to believe it. Yeah. Congratulations. This yeah. is a big deal. Iris, do you have any building experience? Yeah, Great. I do. Awesome. Yeah. And I have tools if you need that. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that would be great what you need. I would probably come out, I have my, you know, bougie little van that I can haul tools in and sleep yeah. in and do all that. Yeah, that would be awesome. So if, if that's useful, I can do it. So who else, who else is going to join me? Let's go. <laughs> we, we do, do have, have a list, list actually, a CD go home. Oh, actually, let's put that in there. See home interest form. We've got 150 people who want the house. Right. See <laughs> home uh, interest form. Um, let's put that in the chat. I'm also saying that for later. But if you want to be considered, I mean, we'll see. I mean, we're going to be able to do 50 houses next year. Uh, and scaling, like once we figure out one group more apprenticeship let's get the next cohort so so as soon as we think we have everything under control with the curriculum and and program going and staff staff available we're going to be replicating this as a module as a very i mean the core module is here's how you do an enterprise um, apprenticeship program which results in 24 trained people that can build a house like this in in the five days after six months of training that's the package we're developing and publishing that so anyone else can do that around the world. Um, 
So that's, that's the idea. And of course, provide like uh, training support, whether you're taking an apprenticeship or other forms of learning. But we have to provide all those levels up to like how do you do the entrepreneurship on this? If you want to just be a builder, take the apprenticeship. If you want to run crews, you're going to have to r take the management track. Or if you want to actually run one of these um, entire things with 24 people as a business, take, take the entrepreneurship route. Things like that. So that, that's, that's all being developed. And as far as the big picture things of you know, the, the, where this is going and all that, any questions on um, how this works and what the outcomes of the, the publication could be? Because the publication is effectively download this and you're enabled to build or enterprise on this thing. Build, design, enterprise. Those three things. It happened a little early, no? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> oh, well, we started so early. Start got on four minutes early. Yeah. Um, so yeah, let's see how many people find the. Oh, we got most of the people. That's that's pretty good. Um, so, uh, any other questions, just regarding the kind of overview and big picture of things. Yeah. I see you, Merchant. I see you, John. Miguel. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, um, yeah, I just, I don't really have a specific question. I just have, well, I have a lot of questions and thoughts <laughs> around the whole concept of the, enter well, the enterprising model of it. Um, and I was communicating the email, like, how does this apply to commercial real estate? So having you approach the you know, the IBC building code and those types of things. I wonder, um, yeah, I wonder how that could apply to it now. So it's not really so specific on your exact project, but the eco seed home. So I'm just, I don't want to derail the conversation um, with some of those other questions that may not be related to what you want to cover. Yeah, you're asking how does this apply to, say, a commercial builder wanting to get into building? What the CD homes or something else or, or what? Yeah, I guess it would be it'd be something else. Um, same, you know, structure. You know, the inner workings of it. So looking at trying to apply the processes of documentation um, and refinement uh, to other other building types and business enterprises. So all those align. Well, it aligns completely, and we're saying that, okay, we're documenting the pattern for the CD Eco home here, this specific, including financial model for it, well, that's, that's that product. But given that this is a construction set, then we're now branching into, okay, here's other materials, like block, other construction uh, materials, but that would work with the same kind of pattern of modularity. So if it's designed in this modular way, as in these human-scaled modules that people can lift, uh, that can build any kind of a structure. Like I mean, it could look like the rosebud, or it can look completely different. You're you're just talking. Here's four by eight panels. Well, what can you do with four by eight panels? Well, you can do anything. You can make any shape and all that. So, um, but like for example, we have techniques defined. Here's how you do the the flat roof with EPDM and stuff like that, we, we might not get you in this current iteration. We're not doing things like gable roofs or, or hip roofs and things like that. Uh, but the idea is to any size, any shape, and any material for this building system. But not, not if you want to build something that is not modular or like sw swarmable. Now this could include a lot of different other things like for example the workshops where you know the other thing we're developing as part of the 
the infrastructure is also steel-based construction out of rebar. Uh, so, so the the rebar truss thing. That let me just show you the link for that. Um, but this is. So if you're talking about like here's a a shop building. Um, take a look at the link on that. Uh, using these these space frame trusses that are made out of welded steel. That's what we intend to do for the scalable workshops because this design technique is also once again designed for huge scalability. Like that's the singular truss, but you double up the steel and you can get to each column supporting 300,000 pounds. So if you do some math, here's our scalability process that on that same, same kind of a rebar truss. And here you have a multi-story structure where you can actually be building machines on the upper floors. So it's like, that's how we're designing this kind of stuff. So, so what, 20 minutes? Everything is designed uh, for the scalability. Uh, um, many different building things. So, so there's, we're documenting the core procedure. Now, if you want to talk about, here's the process for how you collaborate effectively with many other people, well, the design guide will be a proof of that. Here's how we actually did collaborate with many, many different people. And there's other elements to this collaboration method, like, for example, running uh, incentive challenges or big hackathons to be developed and things like that where where because you have so much material already produced on it like the cd home and it's a big hairy audacious goal to solve housing you can get people to show up and we call it extreme enterprise hackathon where you're actually producing getting a lot of skilled people this would be highly curated where you could you could invite like right now we're kind of doing this in the wild just inviting everybody and, and seeing what sticks and experimenting with what does stick and what does work. But if you curate the process very, very highly, you can think about here's an extreme event where like a thousand people show up over a weekend and we actually get the whole thing done with a thousand people in a, say this 24 hour documentation sprint across the globe. We're actually publishing the revenue models too because we have proven them. Like, like this October, November, we're going to be proven out the economic model. So once we have enough material, then yeah, you can get these radical um, documentation sprints, um, enterprise sprints where you produce real product. And the goal is quite ambitious. It's actually to do better than any software unicorn. I think when we get this process down, uh, we can get to a billion, like a billion dollar, not, not a centralized operation, but meaning a distributed operation, billion within a year, one or two years which is the record for software unicorns, which don't have, which don't move, move atoms around. Uh, I think you can do that and actually better with hardware, but it takes, it's much, much more expensive, much more advanced the process because you're moving real hardware, logistics, and everything else. But I believe that's the limit. And, and I think right now we really need that to be able to collaboratively de design solutions to real pressing issues. So you're, literally solving all the issues that are related to material scarcity from war and poverty and hunger and current global situation and all that. That's a long answer. <laughs> You're talking to yourself though. <laughs> yep. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. I just, uh, as you're speaking about these things, I'm just, there's a lot of avenues. It takes a lot of, you know, real power to make it all happen. So that's, um, I, just currently trying to think of how I can apply this to the project I'm working on and then also, you know, to synergize their efforts. Uh, yeah, I mean, the answer would be simple. If you want the design of the lowest cost house, the highest performance house at the lowest cost, I mean, that's that's what we're designing for. You can definitely replicate it. You can definitely help on putting all the documentation together. Uh, as far as if you want to do this as a business, it's all it's going to be open. So if you guys want to be building structures like this, yeah, we've got this single family home. Well, you can put like a bunch of rooms upstairs, make it a multi, you know, like say for homeless people or something like you can do or transitional housing, whatever. You can do all kinds of modifications. So I think we go. I, I've also got some thoughts, uh, too, if you wanted to uh, contact me offline. Sorry, March, I didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah, no, no, no. Um, no, go ahead. But like just because you're taking the veteran angle, um, like like fundamentally what what it's doing is clarifying the path when, when you go from even like former formerly incarcerated returning citizens veterans anybody who's struggling in the labor market it's creating that path that combines the education's like the skill gap problem and the income problem in a combined way 
that is unique. And so like, you know, we could talk for hours probably about how, how that would fit into your thesis proposal. Yes, no, no, let's definitely keep the dialogue going. I don't, I want, I think you mentioned the context for this dialogue was focused on the table of contents, so I don't want to, yeah. I can I could go forever about the other um, concepts, but yeah, I don't want to take away from your intentions of this meeting. Yeah, does anyone else have any questions just before we want to dive in? Yeah. If not, then then let's let's go to the next part, which is really about okay. The focus is the table of contents. This book, the the Open Building Institute Building Book, a generative set of documents that are important because they're connected to an economic reality. If people actually can actually take this, either build a house for themselves or actually start a business, and the question becomes for all of us, okay. What, what do you want to see in this this guide? Well, you got to have some blueprints, you got to have some build instructions and bills and materials at least, and you, you can have many other things. You have explanations of how you collaborate and, and others, but what we, what, what we want to do right now is focus on that which is the shark closest to the boat here, and that is, uh, I would say, the, the build cheat sheets, the actual detail of, of what you're building going between the, the CAD files, the bills of materials, and build instructions. So encaps, encapsulated in when you have a per, say a person shows up, you got this swarm build, you got 24 people at least on a site, each one of them is going to get, they probably might work in pairs, so actually like 48 would be ideal. So think about it that, you've got, you've got a partner, you've got this sheet of paper, what do you want to put on that sheet of paper for you to be able to, to build this thing? We've got plenty of materials on what this takes already, but you'd have to study some of it to get around what what already exists and what, what needs to exist. But at the very beginning, you can say, oh, well, um, we got to build a foundation. Uh, what's a foundation? You start with, um, and then how you build it, and so forth. So I, I'm wondering if what we can do here is if people are willing to contribute pages to the to this um, to this building book, at the end of the day, it will be here's a page, and it takes like maybe a couple of hours, maybe ten hours to to do a page. That's a high quality um, document that anyone that's intended for anyone else in the world. Um, but. Is it possible to try right now to say, okay, well, here's one element, and, and this right now includes every single thing. It's like, you gotta build the floor, you gotta build the kitchen sink, you gotta install the uh, dishwasher. We have a dishwasher in there. <laughs> here's how you build the cabinets. Here's how you plumb the toilet. It goes down to all this, and we're, um, we're doing it differently than, than, for example, like, for for an electrician, you would just give them the, the schematic. Here's like where all the outlets are and things like that. For us, we include that plus more. Like a person, normal person won't be able to read a schematic. They'll be like, well, how do you wire up those wires? Well, they won't know that. So you have to document all those little details. And this, do this document has to have it because we're assuming here's a person who potentially never built anything before. It's kind of like, you have websites like Hunker or The Spruce, um, or whatever DIY websites around. It's like, well, here's for the common person who's not trained in this. What do you need to give to them to enable them to build it? You have to start with tools, like how to use different tools. Like you're definitely going to have to use a, a screw gun or a cordless drill. If you're going to be cutting lumber, you definitely have to use a cutoff saw and things like that, or a circular saw or other tools. So I'll... Um, it's Would it be helpful uh, to give, I guess, like me the mechanics of like, if I'm showing up to this, I've never worked on the wiki yeah. before. Wh like, what steps do I need to follow to identify a, a small piece and then get to work? Yeah. Especially if like those watching the recording. Yeah, I think for those, especially for those people and the recording. So, so let's let's do this. Let's let's come into an IRS already say, hey, let's do the floor. Um, so let's say. The goal, end goal of this is you get assigned to a page. So think about it that way. If you're actually committing to it, so you have to sign up. Okay, I'm going to do this page. There's 1,500 pages. Okay, I'm going to take page 350. 
It's how to build a floor. Uh, or maybe it's a couple of pages, can be, can be longer. But we will have a, a long list of items that need to be done. But to, to, yes, process and all the assets existing. That's the critical thing. The critical thing you want to be, be able to do is on one side, uh, so let's, let's, let's dive into here's how we collaborate um, and, and how we do it. So first, how do you document this stuff? We can't have documents all over the place and not able to find them. We put it all on a wiki. We put it all as Google Docs. So there's a document we have already for how do you collaborate. And so here's um, OSC collaboration process. Hey, we've been doing this for, for a bunch of time. Um, and that's not even coming up, so I'm going to say protocol. I'm going to see collaboration protocol. Here it is. So take a look at that one page. But at the very minimum, you, you kind of have to know this. This is how do you collaborate? Well, what, what, where is everything? How do you find it? Well, um, I'll go through a little bit of this. So, so basically, I think probably the most instructive thing to do is go over a quick review of, OK, here's how we collaborate. And here, where do you find every single thing about this? And what, what we will do is go over a bunch of that, and then people who review this online can also review it. But we'll put on all the links of all the critical assets to this because we have to start with that. And we call that collaboration literacy, collaborative literacy. Um, I mean, in the OSC collaboration protocol, the think of it this way: it's it's really about getting your mind around uh, um, how everything is organized. So you have to understand the concept of taxonomy. Like everything is organized. If you if you talk about building a house, it's got a process. If you talk about um, so you have to know parts of wh what does a design process look like? What documentation is important? For collaborating, how do you communicate? We do that by logs on the wiki. We do it by uh, assigning pages, specific pages to individuals. We, um, let me share my screen. So, so I'll go through, let me walk you through what I do. I open up the wiki. So OK, um, here's you guys. I open up a new tab on the wiki and I go to my log. This is a, this is what everyone keeps. Like I keep marching log and I put links on the wiki to what uh, to what everything I'm working on. Like for example, I was working on CD to Home Two marketing strategy today. It's a link in the wiki. You have to know how to put it in a wiki and how to edit this wiki. So so on the wiki you have to go. Okay, here you start a new page on the wiki. Did you know that a wiki is editable? That you can actually edit start a page and but you have to log in. So I'm going to log out and then I have to log in. You have to start by requesting an account. So whatever username, um, whatever. If you don't have a wiki account, you got to do this. This is all our documents editing happen on the wiki. It's like a universal repository. And the wiki is just a blank slate. It's But you can put anything into it. Like, for example, the front page of the wiki is formatted like this. But all it is is if you go uh, edit this, now I have to log in here. Um, I have to log in, but now I can edit it. But what's in here? All it is is like HTML code and just simple text and things like that. So for example, if I have some random page that I start up, I boot up, it's going to have nothing on it. I created this page. But did you know that if, if I write this, it goes into the universe? So I save it, and you just wrote your first page. Hey. Uh, this becomes public. Anyone can see this if they go to this page on the wiki. So you have to know how to edit. The next thing is work log. Learn how to do a work log. Uh, meaning that all you do is set up a, this talks about the work log, but you got to know how to do this. Um, uh, how do you know? How do I know? I say all you are working on is how do I know where you put your stuff? Well, the convention for us is like, I, I would go to John log. Is he doing any work? I go to John Log. That's how we do it here, because we know his name. I Test. His name. Oh yeah, he's doing stuff. He's actually pumped in some new stuff on June 24. He he linked in all the YouTube uh, CD home potential contacts. Um, 
So this is a universal way. Like if I if I knew not what's going on, I can go to the wiki. I can go to recent wiki changes, and I would see, oh, John Miller, he actually um, did something. Let's let's see this. So you can actually orient yourself that way. But if you're assigned to a specific page, like say you're actually working on this table of contents, so we got this big TLC. Well, um, Tim was going to work on a, an electrical diagram, so he goes on this and he kind of starts stewarding it, and because we have it in the index, you can actually find it. Now, the thing is, like, this is actually a link, so anytime when you edit, um, if you put double brackets around it, it turns into a link, so this is like the ba super basics of the wiki. Um, so now I can actually, in the table of contents, this is our content for Y. Okay, because we want to solve housing. See there, that's a contribution. That could be our first page. Why are we doing this? We want to solve housing. Now, if we have a compelling uh, copy, yeah, this, that's, that's what makes a book. Uh, why? Um, now, the, so the biggest thing is learn how to edit the wiki, keep a work log, and embed Google Docs. So. You must have heard of Google Docs. We use um, we have a template. Um, well, the thing is, what you want to learn, and this is um, you go to how to embed Google Docs. What you can do is simply uh, take Google Docs that come from the company Google. And you can put them in on a wiki. Just embed them. They'll be visible and editable. Um, you can go how to learn everything about everything. Well, I'm getting a little distracted here, but uh, let's go to how to embed a Google Doc. Now this is a page I created some time ago, or someone else created. Uh, so this is, tells you how to do, do this. You go open up a Google Doc within a Google platform, and you can actually make it, make it appear on the wiki. For example, this is our page with uh, the electrical design. This is an embedded working doc. What we have is the actual embedded doc, and an edit link underneath it, where if you click edit, you actually go into the Google Doc, and that is its own, like if you weren't on the wiki, you could still edit the Google Doc. That's the thing. Now, on a Google Doc, you could have like 100 people working on this doc. You can have 100 different documents, 100 people working on them. But just put them back into the wiki, into the table of contents. So here, you know, for example, I'm looking at the lighting in the kitchen, blah, blah, blah. Uh, someone else could be working on these other pages. Uh, if you embed them in the wiki and I can find them in the table of contents, I'll be able to find what anyone else is doing. Okay. On the table of contents, um, There is, um, this is very shallow, like it's got only like 10 items, very easy, but once you get to 1,500 pages, that's gonna get a little tricky. So here we start, um, on the bottom I put in links, so here like that's how you do links and under, this is the syntax for it. I put a how-to page, uh, and you can start learning, like on each page we can start adding links to other pages where you actually tell people how to do things. Um, but I'd like to propose this. We have like the main TOC, main table of contents, then like more detailed, and then page specific. Because you see if you have three layers, like that adds up real quick. Like if you had like 20 by, you know, 10 by 10 by 15, like 10 things in the main, main index, the detailed index might have more. But what am I talking about layers here? Like for example, under, okay, definitely build instructions. Build instructions gonna have like tons of pages, right? One of them could be like cheat sheets. Um, you, we're gonna have a section on for build instructions. We're gonna have a section that says about build cheat sheets. And it becomes an editable thing because it was in double brackets. So now I do this and I can put like um, whatever I have here. But if you have like plumbing, you might break down plumbing into, okay, here's like 20 parts of the plumbing. And so, so my point is under each of these, this is like the first level of the, these 10 items, but you might have like 15 layers as subtopics and further topics. But if you get to 1500 pages, that might get a little complicated. Um, but at the end of the day, we wanna have an individual page so that there is no ambiguity on who is working on what. So at the, okay, so let me explain this concept. If if you are trying to have, which which I'm, try, I'm trying, I'm gonna say, what if 
we were to organize an event where we actually called out 1,500 specific skilled people. Like for example, we started our, our uh, program, apprenticeship program, and we got up to, in two years, we got up to 240 people. Well, how would you get 240 people to design something like in one day? Uh, well, you want to be very granular. At that level, you want to be super granular. If we try to get, say, 2,000 people to collaborate on this, to get this document put out, not in 10 years from now, but like next month. That's the whole promise. We're trying to say we're swarming it, and we're going to do it in rapid time, like the build, uh, five days instead of eight months, right? So if you want to do that, you have to be get down to very granular, and, and therefore, ideally, you would have a unique link for a person. If I or you are working on a, on a finished floor, there's a page on the wiki that's finished floor. So that other people can look at it, they can help you, but you know you've got that and I can find it, say, from your log if you learn to put a work log on your wiki. Um, so maybe I can ask here, if there's a whole bunch of people working on this, would you be able to find exactly what's the last thing that's been done and what the status of everything is? Because that's going to be required. And it cannot be top down. Each person in the process will have to understand what is the status. Otherwise, this will bog down in bureaucracy. So each person has to get this basic level of collaborative literacy to understand, okay, here's where everything is. Here's how I find it. Find it. If I do something, here's how I put it up. So probably the best thing to do is think about it. How would I do that? Start thinking for yourself, because I can talk about this forever, but you really have to start thinking, what would that process look like if you're trying to design not like even a thousand, I'm saying infinite scalability. Think that way. And once you can start wrapping your head around that kind of a mental paradigm, that's when we will be able to do, do this process. And right now, we can't. Maybe the best example of this is Wikipedia, which has a bunch of people working on uh, many different things at a time. But nobody does this where everyone understands like the basics of design process, basics of working real time, because Wikipedia does not study how a lot like, oh, how do you do like a swarm weekend, um, very dedicated event. No, like we're one of the very few people, people or organizations where we're trying to say, here's this uh, sophisticated process called product development process, which you can Google, find out what that is. We call that open source product development. This is bunch of information on it if you want to dive into that on the wiki. So uh, it's a page called OSPD because that o o called Open Source Product Development, what, it, what that's about. All we're doing is we're doing the concept of here's product development, but we're adding open source aspects to it. So you have to get around it. And, and, the, and the concept that we talk about is called collaborative literacy. Like you have to get your head around what it means that you're designing a process for an infinite number of people where you can immediately, in a second, find any asset. And, and to do that, there's, there's a lot of elements, and you can study the, the let me put you another page called uh, Collaborative Literacy. Um, Merchant, yeah. uh, real quick, we have a question in the chat. Um, I think you showed it briefly. The template for like the, the font and everything that you use, Iris is asking um, as she's working on the page. Well, OK, so I'm going to put this, so, so the, the link to study is in the chat box. Um, John, so you're catching these, these uh, links? Okay. I got them. Uh, collaborative literacy is one. Now, for Iris's specific question, that's called wiki editing. Like, how do you edit the wiki? There's a page on that. Um, wiki editing or wiki instructions. Uh, that That's all in there. But the basic, yeah, yeah, I mean, but think about what are the basic things you want to do. Like start with that approach. So kind of like train yourself. Well, what do I need? I need to change fonts, I, like make them bigger or bold or whatever. Yeah, those are basics. And you can learn that through the page called Wiki Instructions. Um, but, but in terms of like design themes, we don't have one that we're holding everyone to from the start. It's, it's literally open to see what their creative process develops. And then we can reconcile it later, right? Yes. Ultimately, yes. Now, of course, we've got plenty of prior art on that, and I can throw down a, a Bible on you right now and get, get covered with books of what you have to study. For example, we have um, like instructional template. Okay, what's that? 
So let's go through some of the assets that we do have, maybe, and that's how we'll wrap up th this meeting, too, so you know where. Well, first, um, let's t talk about the tools, and then let's talk about the content, what content we all have on the CE Go Home that you can study, because there's thousands and thousands of pages and thousands of hours already. Like the CAD itself, I've been working nothing but the CAD for the last three months, for example. So there's hundreds of hours in there. Um, and many, many other people last year. Okay, so instructional template. Um, Did that answer your question, Iris? So here's a template that we use, but it's like, okay, this, we, I mean, the, the kind of uh, nice cover and the come through instructionals template, read that page. But the thing is, uh, I'm going to put, put this forth as this is the template. Okay, so there's a very simple template. It's just a sl slide presentation on Google, one page. And you can edit it, you can put pictures in it. That's all you need to know. And at the end, and as individuals get better, they can start formatting it ideally to templates. But the first thing is let's get the content and organization so that we can be going at it with layers. But you see the template, you can click edit on it and you can make a copy of that and you can publish something again, change the title and all, and you'd think that uh, somebody else, if you give it to me, if you use a template, because there's so much work already gone into it, mm -hmm. if you actually publish it, it'd be like, holy cow, you did all of that in, in, a, in a day? <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. You're supposed to be building on all the stuff that's already mm -hmm. there. And if we have, <laughs> say, for example, like HTML gurus, because Wiki, like, you can format things immaculately and make it like a professional web page because it accepts HTML and CSS and, and any embeds of anything. So on one side, what I would propose is we have this big TOC that actually ends up linking to working pages where you definitely embed like a presentation. So the presentation, I, let's start very simple. Uh, the key thing is just we use this. Uh, we like the font called, so, so let me share this 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 template um, click on that you right. know what Marcel Marcel I just saw in the how to edit in media wiki yeah the contents if you just run down the table of contents it has all the things about um, syntax and templates and grouping and style yeah. guidelines and yeah all that stuff to link on so yeah and at the end, like, so that's exactly right. And then Thanks. that's how to. And then what about the specific instance of how we do it? So, uh, like, if you take a look at, um, let me share my screen again. I mean, we always adapt. Yes, you can get, like, 99%, but then at the end, here's our publication. So at the very least, you have to, like, put your, this is, like, OSE. You know, you have a template, you might put, oh, this is the OSE manual for doing this. Uh, so you always have to modify, but you can build upon a huge load of knowledge, and then you you, um, you add more to it all the time. Um, so for example, just to give you an example, like we've got the electrical, or say the plumbing design doc. Now let's go to the back to the, let me see, am I uh, sharing? Let me share this. So just to give you an example of a template in action. Well, this working doc on electrical design, that's just the template I, I published into the into the, the chat box, the docs.google.com link. So to, to explore this, well, all it is is that, you know, that page, so, so say it's a page, it's got this font, which we, we like Ubuntu Condensed, so, you know, keep using that. It's got our branding, which has got like the open source ecology, CC by SA, that's the license. That means this is open for anybody to edit and do whatever they want with it. Um, it's absolutely open source and all that, but that's that's a multiple 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 page doc. That means it has many pages. You can add as much content as you want. But note, this is embedded into this wiki page. So if you just understand that, that there you go. Now, 
on the wiki, you can embed things which are called galleries. Like there's a function of the wiki, you can read it on a wiki how-to page. But gallery, it's, it's marked by this gallery tag, but it allows you to put little thumbnails for, for everything. So the absolute critical gallery that we'll use, and that's all we need for knowing where things are, master files here. So let's explain those. So this is where all the files are. You can find every single file that we're going to be talking about from now forever um, on the Seeker Home 2 V2 3D CAD master files. OK, so what are the notable things you want to do? Well, um, I can tell you that, so you know, you need some explanation here. But um, now, it so happens, what is this, master files? I'm going to go edit here and put the electrical design up as the first thing so you can find it easily. So I'm going to cut this out. Um, and I'm going to go to master files on the very top as the first thing. OK, so I just changed it on a wiki. And what that means is that if you refresh, so I put save page. If you refresh now, the first thing under master files will be the electrical design. Now, this happens to be the file that I've been updating lately. So the latest is actually, it says latest, click on that. And it happens to be this thing on an open source uh, repository called GitLab, because this thing is like 10 megabytes. Download it. There you go. So it's called Electrical64. But this is actually what you download today after this, after you download FreeCAD. Uh, so now if I double click on that file, um, it opens up. And look at that. Now you just copied the, you've got the electrical design file, which actually has just about everything in there, because I ended up putting up everything, everything in there. So that has, um, uh, and let's go, let's go through the layers. So you need to understand the layers. Let's go super quick through what this file has, so you can orient yourself. But the first thing to do would be if you want to do, because this is actually all accurate here. This is like technically correct. Like, if you look at it, um, you know, here's your cabinets. They're like three eighths inch away from the wall because there's wall sheathing on there, which is, for example, it should be organized. Um, I'm gonna cl close this one. It should be organized in some reasonable way, like the beadboard layer. Oh, I actually just turned it on. There it is. There's that beadboard. Um, if I shut off everything, I just have the. This is the beadboard layer, you know, like it's, it's all in there. So kind of uh, go through this whole, so what you have to do is download FreeCAD and, and for the minimum, minimal, if you don't know how to design in FreeCAD, all you need to do is learn how to open documents and view them like an orthographic or perspective view. Uh, and you can view it like from the front, top and all that, like that's how it looks from the top. Hey, that looks kind of like a floor plan. Right, so the free cut is very powerful. It's very powerful. So now turn, turn like that. It looks like that. But from the top, it looks just like lines. This is actually correct. This is what we're building. Uh, this is all the sheathing, for example. Um, so learn, learn about free cut. It's got all the layers in here. It's got. Um, that's the file you want to open up. Um, it's got a lot of detail in there. So and I like to look at it in perspective view, so you can see it. But but start playing with this to see what that file has and how you can go from one thing. Because for example, you can go, oh, well, if I have the, you know, I can unhide things or whatever. Say I have the, <clears throat> the kitchen cabinets. Well, when we're going to be here in ne next week, we have to do that piece by piece. So where do we start? Well, uh, every little piece is in here. So you can kind of like start breaking it apart, actually by cabinet by cabinet. Uh, different parts, but yeah, it's it's got everything in there, and then you can expose. Oh, there's actually the plumbing under the sink, and if you saw that, there was a c conflict between this little tube down here and the sink, so that means we actually got to raise it up a little bit and so forth. But you can pretty much um, view everything here. Okay, so let's go back to what else do we need to know? So, wiki embedded Google Docs. You need to know that. Start a work log. And, and look at the wiki instructions so, so you know how to navigate and learn how to do Google Docs because extremely powerful because multiple people, a dozen people, 24 people can be working on the same doc and can rapidly be putting together information. That's how this process can scale. Because you know, say you got one doc here, 20 people, another doc there, 
a hundred docs. Like, there's really no limit. Um, and the wiki itself, it's got a... Um, think about this, and I won't go into detail, I'll just give you the concept. The wiki has a complete taxonomy. Like, whenever we do a project, um, there's a bunch of taxonomy that goes into, like, um, that allows me, for example, to take any of the 50 machines uh, and find out every single aspect about them. Um, so I'll show, um, let me share my, well, I'll share the page called taxonomy. Uh, you should, in principle, be able to find any asset about any project within a few seconds if you understand how the wiki works. Like, at first go, it might look like it's a complete mess, but actually, it's, it's actually, there's a lot of organization in there. Um, so the taxonomy page, um, study that page, and I won't go into I won't go into it right now. Study that page, but the promise is, I can at the tip of my fingers find out. Like if tomorrow, I want to know which uh, hydraulic pump did we use on a power cube from 2017 when we built the micro track here. Three seconds, I'm there. Think about that. That's a complete augmentation of the brain. So think about the Think about the wiki as an augmentation of your brain. And you're actually welcome to do that. It's not like my wiki, it's a public wiki. I use it for my purposes all the time. It's a real extension of my brain. Anything that I do, I put it down on a wiki because how do you learn? You learn by reiterating things. Uh, but now I can tell you I can find any single aspect of any project. So if you study the taxonomy page, you can, you can uh, actually find out more about it. Uh, knowing taxonomy, and knowing open source product development, you can in principle go to any single s development step of any technology that we have. That's actually um, seen in, if you look at the main, the SH2 page, Seed Home V2 page. And let me, um, let me explain the Seed Home 2 page. So uh, this is where actually all the you can find all the assets. I'm going to type it in. I think we already went to this page already, the Seed Home 2 V2 page. So uh, click on that link, and you're going to go to a thing that, so I'm sharing the screen here too. But actually, this here thing, this this thing with like 20 lines, those are all the main development steps of, of a open source product development process. We don't stop at development. We actually go to the enterprise level. So here, we are actually documenting all the work that's gone into this, exploring, benchmarking, unique value proposition, product strategy, cost structure, business plan, critical path, economic benefit, planning, operations, manual training and management, facility design, production, quality control, product, product assessment. Everything goes into the, the enterprise development process. Just like for product, the actual development process of the product, which is the house, well, clearly you have a design and all its assets. You have a bill of materials. You've got the build instructions. You've got life cycle design. And all this can be broken down into other, other things, and we document that. So in this description, in this column here called description, you have somewhat of a description. Probably all of it is outdated. And yeah, like whenever you see anything on a wiki, it's, everything is outdated. Because next day you change it, right? That's kind of how we work. You have to get your mind into, into this mindset. But there will be a lot of stuff in there that's relevant. And when we do the publishing sprint of this um, this manual, the CD Home building book, it's where we fix a copy that says, okay, this is a publication that's like this fixed snapshot and it's got everything. But it does mean that the um, whole product is evolving at all time. Now, what are the critical th things about the development template? Well. Um, if you want to learn everything about the development template, and there's a page called development template. Uh, so I'm going to go to that. But this embedded template, so, so this, is, this is what it is. There's a long description here, development spreadsheet template, it's called. But there you can study like what that's all about. But it basically tries to break down the whole development process and the enterprise development process into steps. Here's 20 steps for the product. Here's 20 steps for enterprise. There you go. Um, and that's it. Um, once you know all that, you can collaborate with anybody infinitely on large teams. <laughs> um, I, don't know, I don't know what to say. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that goes into 
this whole technique, it's largely about wrapping your head around the possibility of, of, because this is digital, once you have digital assets, you can share them infinitely. For example, we can take some of the CAD files and 3D print things. Like if we have the mod model of the wall module, we can actually take our large printer, which we don't have, but we could in the future, uh, print that out. Or we can print out parts, which we already do. You know? So digital design is very powerful. When you think about the digital design, think of the limit as once we have the full digital model, one thing I would like to do is do a massive online multiplayer game where you're actually assembling the house in a game. You can learn a lot <laughs> from that. And that comes from having the full digital model. That's why we're doing all these things to this level of detail, because we want to solve housing. Period. Any questions? <laughs> Yeah, so there's a lot. Um, you have to, so for the CD, well, that whole template, well, there's a bunch of information in there. If you want to know exactly what's what has been done on the CD home, click on all those links. But the summary of it ends up, what's really the CAD files, the build materials you already got a link for, instructions. I mean, there's plenty of links to the design docs or build instructions, what we already did. And remember, we're building this this inside right now, so we don't know. Like we think we already drew up some build instructions, but we'll prove them and improve them. prove and improve them as we do this build here in October. We'll make we'll make minor changes. We're not going to make a lot of changes. We're like pretty far down the road. We're not making a lot of changes. We've worked out a lot of the systems and modularity concepts. Uh, but maybe last thing is if you go into few critical CAD pages. I have on my tabs, so I'm, if I'm sharing my screen, on my tabs, make, make yourself some tabs. I have plumbing, electrical, and SH2, and master files. Those are the, probably the critical. So master files you already got, those are the master CAD files. The plumbing doc is this. That's the latest work. That's like the detail and the design doc for the all the plumbing. So I'm going to put that in. Because that's what we're actually going to be building. If you're going to be coming here to build or building in October, uh, you're going to be needing that. I mean, this is for the doc. This is all relevant. Um, there's the electrical page, CEH2 electrical design. Once again, all these pages are actually linked from that development template. So I'm not actually saying anything new right now. If you dive into what I already gave you, this is already there. But I'm making it explicit right here. Uh, so there's the electrical design. The SH2, the main development template, that you already got. I have a link to my work log, which is like when you're working, like put links to everything you do on your wiki, uh, wiki page. Get an account, get a work log. Uh, because, I mean, just practically speaking, it's easy for me to remember say, oh, Miguel. Okay, I, I remember Miguel. He came here twice uh, or more. and. Um, Okay, I can go and get a log, and I'll find his log and find out what, what he's working. So it's very easy to, to remember people. And then you can kind of find out between, like, the table of contents, between the, the work logs, between recent wiki changes, between understanding taxonomy, between knowing the, the master files uh, location. Uh, one more thing about the master files, like, you'll notice there's a version history and I'll quit at that. I'll talk about version history. So for example, on the, both on the picture and on the CAD file, like cabinets, okay? I'm gonna click on cabinets. I click on cabinets. Hey, you see there's a version history here. So that means the older working version is still stored here. So understand that and use that. That means upload things constantly. Just keep uploading stuff. Don't lose anything like with a computer crash. Just keep uploading stuff, like publish early and often, really. Like, as I work, pretty much like every hour I would upload a file. So it's got a version history. And sometimes you'll need the older versions because maybe you change something you want to go back to something else. Now you should have that both on your computer and on the internet here. Because remember, you're working with an unlimited number of people. That means anything that you have on your desktop, you want to get as soon as possible so that somebody else can build upon it. The person in Japan goes to sleep having finished the plumbing on a second floor toilet. Then the next person wakes up in England 
and they download that file, but that file has to be uploaded. So the biggest thing to get out of this conversation, as soon as you have something, upload it. Now, this is automatically addressed in the Google Docs as soon as you edit the doc. It's already visible to everybody. But on a wiki, you have to click edit or upload. Now, what's convenient also, like we use these part galleries here, like um, say this uh, cabinets file, we'll go back from here. The pictures are also versioned. Like for example, this, um, you can click on the picture and you also have a version history of the picture too. So like if you, if you want to update your, um, your thumbnail here, this is all like, you got to learn how to do this through the wiki instructions, how to do uh, galleries. But you can upload upload new versions of the images and that's super convenient, the part gallery. It's like you've got these big files all visually arranged and there's hundreds of these here. You can go on, you can go forever. And that's the kind of level we're going at. As long as you upload it, the wiki is infinitely scalable, don't worry about that. Um, Google Docs are quite scalable. Well, everything about this process is scalable, so you really have to get your mind around this possibility. I think I'll leave it at that. Thank you. So study, study this, study where all the assets are, and then um, I'm going to follow up with everybody here. Um, now, everyone got this through the OS email newsletter? Mm -hmm. Okay. That sounds good. Um, but maybe um, last thing what I'll do, how do we, um, if you wouldn't mind, just email me, like everyone who was here, cause, uh, so I can follow up. Um, actually, I, I'm catching that everybody who's appearing here, and I know most of the people. I don't have some other others' names. Uh, but maybe email me, um, if you can, marchin or info at opensourceecology.org. Uh, and we'll start a thread of people who have actually appeared at these meetings. Uh, and I'll continue the announcements on the OS email. Uh, but I want to make sure I have everybody. Since I trashed, trashed the entire email list this morning with hope to reclaim it <laughs> through a backup. <laughs> Man. Yeah, thank you, Martin and John and everybody else. Show up. I'll definitely be following up. Uh, we can have a continued dialogue about how um, looks like I might not be able to contribute to this project exactly. I might be able to contribute to your open source initiative in certain contexts, maybe demonstrate some of the principles in some capacity to my thesis. Yeah. Start yeah. small and build on that. Yeah. And what I'll do to follow up, since knowing the people that have been here, I'm going to ask all of you, in fact, I mean, try to email me or put it in the chat box right now. I, I, we got an answer from Iris. Um, what can you do? Like, Take a page, take one thing, and just start doing it. The only way you're going to learn is by start doing it. And this is a, a document that's going to be worthwhile for generations to come. We're changing the world here, so this is actually you know, very worthwhile. So you can feel proud, absolutely proud of what you're doing. This is not like going to waste. This is a real product that's going to go out into the marketplace, and this document is going to allow anybody to replicate. So think about that, and think about that you matter, that that, that matters. And that's people don't think like that. People think that what they do doesn't matter. It, it does if you're working openly because then you simply become immortal. It lives on forever. <laughs> and I'll end it at that. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Archie, if you want to hang around, I'll yeah. keep the meeting open for anybody who has any lingering questions. Yeah. So um, I'm going to probably stop, stop the recording soon. And I'm going, I actually go, we found a lake down here, and the, there's a lake that I'm going to go swimming in two minutes. So I actually got to go, John. <laughs> Uh, okay. Going to get some exercise. But um, real quick. Um, I'll, I'll hang around in case anybody has any other questions. Yeah, if anybody else has any other questions, otherwise, uh, I'm going to. But yeah, think about you know taking a task and, and taking a stab at it and learning by walking. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Martin. Yep.